All right, guys, thanks for everybody coming today. You know, it's been a, an interesting week for us and, and a couple months. But first of all, I want to thank James McPake for everything that he's done for us. James is like a son to us. You know, we've been with him, he's been with us for eight and a half years. He's been a player, a captain, under 18s manager, caretaker, manager, manager. Put his knee back together and, you know, we want to thank him for everything he's done, and he is a much loved and beloved member of the Dundee Football Club family. That's, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that, and all I'm going to say about James, and he knows our feelings about James. Now, we're in a situation where we thought it was time for us to have a change. We, we thought that we needed, we have a problem, um, we need to stay in the league. We want to stay in the league. We have to take a, a look at where we're at. Do we think that we can do it um, the way that we were doing it and be successful? And we took that decision to say, no, I don't think we can do that. Gordon and I started having conversations a few weeks back and started talking about what we can and cannot do. We started having external conversations with people to say, is there a better solution than what we currently have? And come to the resolution that we think there might be from what was said to us in these conversations. Mark has a touchline ban, everybody knows about that. We think that there are ways around that. And we think that that is not going to hinder anything that we need to do on the park. We have, uh, along with Mark, Simon Ross is coming on. We're going to be working alongside with Dave and that will be the team that is going to take us into and stay in the Premier League. That is our goal. That is the only thing that we're worried about at this moment in time. We're not even thinking about the future, and I'm a big person that is always thinking about and working towards the future. Right now, the future is us staying in the league, and that's the task that is at hand. So without further ado, you guys don't need to talk to me. Welcome, Mark McGee, manager of Dundee Football Club. Okay. First of all, how did this move all come about from your point of view? Uh, it was fairly, uh, you know, less cards on the table here. These type of things happen. Um, I've been in James's position as often as I've been in this position, so I know how it works. Um, but it's fairly recent, in the last couple of days, that you know, uh, I had any conversation um, about the possibility of me uh, coming here. Um, I was made to understand that I was one amongst a couple, at least, that uh, Dundee were considering. Um, I think it would also be fair to say that uh, when they had discussions that Gordon was batting for me, but there were other people, um, and in the end, I got you know a, 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 a shout that uh, they decided they were going to make a change after all, um, and that uh, they'd like me to come and do the job. Why did you feel that this was right for you? Because you come in at a, a time, a crucial point in the season, when Dundee are obviously struggling, a point off the bottom of the table. Um, well, I mean, I think uh, it wasn't just about that. It was about this is a you know a Premier League club. This is a great job for anyone, um, regardless of the position they're in. You know, the, um, uh, it's a job that uh, a lot of people would would, would dearly like, and I'm glad to to have it. As far as the position in the league, you know, I've faced. This situation, you know, I'm lucky in my career that I've been at clubs where I've been promoted, won championships, but I've also been at clubs where we've had to fight against relegation. Um, I've also had jobs where I've went in for fairly short times. Um, not that I intend this to be a short time, but um, I've went in and in the short term kept them up, you know, with this sort of, uh, maybe not quite as short as this, but, you know, I went into. Bristol Rovers in the end of January and kept them up, you know, safely. Um, I went into, uh, you know, Motherwell when they were struggling and kept them up, 
you know, finishing the top half, you know. So I do have a history of uh, of going into clubs and, uh, and and being able to turn it around in the short term. So I had no fear of that as much as I know that it's a difficult job. And you're here until the end of the season at the moment. You've brought Simon Rusk here as well. What What is the long term plan though? Have you had discussions with John Nelms about, you know, come the end of the season, you know, what's the way forward for Dundee? Yeah, we, we, we came here for the long term. We didn't come here for the short term. But, you know, realistically, um, depending on our performance, um, I think uh, John and uh, the club have the right to sort of consider, you know, what happens, you know. So uh, we're comfortable with that. You know, we want to be here in the longer term. Um, I don't know if it's so much we have to prove ourselves, but I think that we have to get on with the job to the point where we can all then sit and reflect and say, yeah, actually, this is working and uh, let's go on with it. And obviously, unusually, you come into the job with a six-game touchline ban. How much of a problem will that be when you're going in to lead a new team? It won't be any problem. It, you know, it really won't. And I, I don't say that, you know, you know, lightly. We we have a guy on the bench, Simon Rusk, with with uh, Dave Mackay, who are well capable of, you know marshalling the troops from the side. We have communication uh, methods these days, mic'd up and phones of course, um, that uh, I can be in touch with the bench. Um, the way the band works is, you probably know, is that you know I've got to be out of the dressing room 75 minutes before the game, which gives me plenty of time. Normally we address the players 90 minutes before the game. So if we have a last word to say to them, I have time to do that. Um, at half time I'm able to meet somewhere in the building with uh, Simon and Dave and discuss what we've seen uh, as well as being in touch with them obviously from the stand um, and at the end of the game it's irrelevant anyway because we deal with that you know, later in the day if we don't deal, deal with it right there and then. So uh, we have no um, issues about it. I think the issue was more about perceptions, you know, how guys like yourself would, would view it. You know, So I think it's... Uh, it definitely was a difficulty, and we did try to, um, uh, you know, deal with it by, you know, speaking to the SFA and seeing if there's some way uh, they could look at it and around it. And within the rules, which is fair enough of the, uh, the sort of constitution, if you like, uh, disciplinary, that there's not a, a, a way of doing that. So we have to accept that. The club have accepted that. I can live with it, and I think it can make it. Mark, can I ask you, let's go back to James' departure. Um, he's won his last two games. Even the Dave were saying themselves they're a year ahead of schedule in terms because I don't think many people expected them to be promoted last season. And what message does this send out to young managers? That they're in a position, he's not bottom of the table, he's lifted them off the bottom of the table at the moment. That you win your last two games, you beat the team in third place last week, you're through to the quarter-finals of the Cup, and then you lose your job. Mm. Well, I mean, I've lost my job in all sorts of circumstances. You know, it happens. You know, now, for me to uh, uh, comment on the, the, the wherewithal with, with the situation with James, it's definitely hardened James, and everybody around here sympathising. I can tell you that, you know, John is in agony over it, you know, but I think they felt that, you know, that it, it was a point where they needed some sort of change, it needed some fresh impetus. Um, it's happened to me lots of times when I didn't think I was finished uh, with a job and people have felt the same thing. Um, it's part and parcel of the uh, of the job that we signed up for, you know, so uh, by all accounts James is uh, 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 as good at his job. Um, he got them up, as you rightly say, and I think he will be um, valued in the you know, in the market, you know, he'll get another job. Mm. It's still tough for a oh. man in his 30s. It's tough for any of us, yeah. you know. It's, it's tough is for is that modern management though? Yeah, well, I, th I think it's uh, not modern management, it's the way it's always been. I think managers have always lost their jobs. I mean, I think there's previously, you know, there's, you know, the statistics, you know, are being horrendously worse than they are now. So I think it's got even a little bit better, but I think it's still part and parcel of the, 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 the game we're in that uh, is a results-based game. And I think that uh, 
you know, the Hearts and the, the Hearts and performance in particular, as I watched the game, um, was terrific. Um, the, the Peterhead game was a great result of an untidy game, um, but I think that people here feel that uh, they had to look beyond that. So what would you deem as being a success between now and the end of the season? Is it purely about survival? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would hope to do better than that. Um, I would hope to, um, you know, put some sort of marker down in terms of our, what we try to do in terms of the team. I've got a brilliant young coach, uh, and I think it's important to, to talk about Simon. Simon is a brilliant young coach, and uh, I think fairly quickly you'll start to see his influence come through in the team. Um, uh, we, we have to we, we, we have to do that. He's a brilliant um, developer of young players, and by all accounts, we have some good young players here. They will benefit uh, from having Simon here. Um, but I think importantly for me, I, I, I desperately still want to be a football manager. But what I can't do and what I don't have is the energy to be out there, you know, uh, you know, working with them on the grass. Um, I'll be out there every day with them, but I won't be doing the job that I've been able to do previously. And I think these young players deserve energy, they deserve a younger voice, they deserve that, you know, um, help from, from, from someone in their mentality. And that's what Simon brings, you know, so I won't be doing the job that I've always been doing. It'll be slightly different, but, you know, trust me, we have a brilliant young coach here. Do you see your own role then as, as possibly a general manager with the, the management of him, who, who will pick the team for I'll pick the team. I will pick the team, but we have worked together previously and, you know, um, when Simon had the sort of heads up, if you like, at, at Stockport, um, he, he had the last say, because I wasn't even his assistant manager, I was the manager's assistant, so I was there to kind of back him up. Um, but he's very democratic, as I am. You know, I've always sat down with my staff and discussed what the team's going to be. I never ever walk in and announce it without a reference, you know, so I've always been like that. He's like that. So between us, with Dave and the others, including the others, um, we will come to the conclusion of what the team's going to be. But if there is a decision to be made, it'll be me that makes it. You've been out of mainline management now, certainly in Scotland now, for about five years now. Um, how do you feel that your appointment will be viewed by Certainly the Dundee supporters in anyway. Well, I think that um, I'm not naive, you know. I know um, that... So let me go back. Somebody asked me recently why we keep wanting to do this job. And I've heard people say things like, oh, it's in the blood and it's, you know, this... Well, I don't know really what that means. But what I would say about myself is that regardless of what stage of my career about, the reason I've worked out, the reason I do it, the reason I do it is because I keep wanting to prove myself. I keep wanting to prove people right and I keep wanting to prove people wrong. And the day I stop feeling like that is the day I stop doing it. But I, 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 I'm up for the challenge of proving again that I can do this, proving again that, you know, uh, that I can keep a team up or that I can you know, do whatever the job is at hand. And uh, that is that is my motivation. As the, the fact that you have this position now, has that surprised you that you've actually been given this position at, at this stage of your career, given the, the gap that you've had at, at top level football? Um, I, I think that, uh, again, um, I think I benefited from my relationship with Gordon. You know, let's not kid ourselves on. You know, Gordon, you know, John appointed me and John you know, in the end, was the one who you know contacted me and who contacted Gordon to say, look, uh, I want to speak to uh, Mark McGee. Um, so it only went so far, in the same way as when my very first job, Alec Ferguson phoned John Medeski and said, you should speak to Mark McGee. You know, so, you know, that happened then and I got the Reading job. This has happened now. Now, whether I'd have got this job or any other job, without a, a, a bit of a leg up, um, I don't know. I'd like to think I would, because I, I think my record speaks for itself. Um, but, you know, there's no denying that um, part of it was uh, Gordon's influence. And why then do you think there has been this gap between you managing at top level football between then and now? Uh, 
partly because I put myself out the road, you know, I'm down there in the south coast of England and uh, I've not put myself out for jobs, I've not applied for any jobs, you know, I've not been in the market for jobs. Um, There's been I, plenty of jobs available though. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I've not, I've been doing bits and pieces of other stuff and I thought I could go away and get involved in other aspects of the game and, you know, some business side and that, but I realise actually I'm not a businessman. Um, I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm a football manager and you know it, it's come about at the right time, I, I, I feel um, I, I should be fitter um, but I feel fit enough to do it, albeit in the way that I've described and not the way I used to do it. It's still a 24-7 job isn't it? Yeah and that's fine, you know I can do that. Celtic on Sunday then? Yeah. Before big game against the league game anyway against St Man yeah. next week. What do you know about the squad? Have you been, I know you said it was only a couple of days ago, but have you been keeping an eye on what's been happening? Yeah, I, absolutely. I have I, I feel as if um, you know I've got a total grasp of the squad. Um, there'll be elements of it that I will take opinion from uh, you know Alan and uh, Dave and the likes and John. Um, but there's a little bit of a kind of um, uncertainty between maybe two two players, but I pretty much have a picture of the players, who they are, what they are, and what they can bring to the team, um, where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, and um, I, I, you know, sitting in there with the, the staff just now, there's nothing they could say that I didn't know about the squad or that you know that I wasn't able to demonstrate that I've done the homework. You know, so I have done the homework. And finally, then. Will you speak to James McPake to find out his thoughts on this no. no. I, I mean, in, in, I mean, I don't know many times I've had a sack. Mm. Need to sit and work it out, but probably I don't know six. You know, and, and uh, nobody's ever spoke to me. You know, not not even players. I don't think very rarely have a player even contacted me. And you know, I, I remember when Jim Smith got the sack when I was at Newcastle as a player and to this day I regret that I didn't call him because I got on great with Jim but I didn't you know and you don't you just get on with your life you just get on with your job and that's what people do and that's what you know uh, I'll go on with the job here and, uh, and James will go on with his life. Good You mentioned earlier on about the target was to keep Dundee in the Premier League. Yep. Firstly can you do it and secondly how are you going to do it? Uh, I think that the, the, the players will do it um, and I think yeah they have enough to stay in the Premier League. I think that um, there are aspects of their performance that um, can tip them from you know nearly winning games to drawing a game or nearly drawing a game to winning a game sort of thing. So I think there are things that can be improved um, and I think that uh, I have the experience to um, manage them through pressure situations, you know, to know how to help them handle those difficult moments. Um, and I think, as I've said already, I have a, a young coach who can um, help them improve quickly and uh, as, a, as a team um, develop again from what James has developed. You know, say it again, I watched the game on, on the, the Hearts game and if we can play like that at um, Celtic Park on Sunday, then we'll do fine. You mentioned about fan reaction earlier on. It's been fairly mixed on social media this morning from the Dundee support. A fair bit of negative reaction coming back. What's your message or what do you want to say to the fans if they turn them out to you? You know, I don't know about the social media, first of all. But um, what I would say is what I've said, is that I do this job every single time to prove myself again. And that's all I can do. I will try and prove to the Dundee supporters that I'm the guy they need and I'm the guy they want. That's all I can do. And will you be making any changes in terms of kind of club captaincy at all? Are you going to kind of keep it as the, the status quo until you kind of have a uh, better grasp uh, on No, there you go. I'm not even, and I know a lot about them back here. I don't even know who the captain is. <laughs> is it Charlie? Charlie, I Yeah. Uh, well, if Charlie's playing Charlie with the captain, for sure. Yeah, and I don't see if he's playing in the sense that I'm about to leave him out, but you know, as long as he's on the team, he will be the captain. And obviously, the league is, is kind of a very strong league this season, can kind of compared to what we've seen in recent years, and there is a kind of a few point gap between safety and the club at the moment. And 
looking at the squad and you know, as you mentioned and having a bit of knowledge about them before you come in, is this is this squad more than capable of staying up? I think that they're um, as equal as the others around us. You know, more than capable. I don't know they're more than capable, but I think that they're not that different from the teams above us and Dobson Johnston. You know, so I think that what we have to do is get the best performance out of the group that we have that we can possibly get and hope that they don't. You know, I think that's what it's going to take. But I think we're capable of winning some games, getting some points and uh, and being competitive, you know, towards the end of the season. Can I just lastly ask about the selection for Saturday? Are you going to be picking the team for, sorry, for Sunday? Are you picking the team or is it be left to someone else to assess the staff? No, 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 I'll pick a team. I'll pick the team, but I'll do it, of course, with counsel from, you know, Dave and Alan, and uh, and of course we'll see them training tomorrow and Saturday, and uh, we'll, you know, I've watched Stephen already. I've watched a lot of uh, why scout and seen lots of their moments and lots of their. I, I've seen three or four full games, and I've seen all their goals and all their goals against and all their corner kicks and all their set plays for the last sort of year. So you know, I know plenty about them. So we will pick the team together. Mark, did you um, meet with the players this morning, and you know what did you sort of say to them? Because obviously they've a lot of them known James McPake for quite some time as well. <coughs> He's been around the dressing room, so probably quite a difficult time for some of them. Yeah, well, we recognised that right away. You know, we we said that you know. Uh, we have total respect for James and you know the job he's done and that we will try and build on that you know we're not here saying that you know we're going to do everything different that everything that they've done is wrong it's not you know there's plenty to work on here and what the work that uh, James and Dave and others have done so far that's uh, that's what we will do um, as far as the players concerned you know again you've got AM players trust you've got AM players uh, you know, you're asking them to you know, give blood. You know, I can't come in here and say to them, right, you've got to give blood for me. They've got to give blood for each other and for for the supporters and for their job and, the, and all of that. But I hope to earn their trust enough that one day, uh, if not soon, then eventually they will do that for me. Mark, you'd say, Mark, you were up to these mum game uh, this season. Yeah. With Paisley, yeah. Have yeah. you seen them live since then? I watched the Hearts game, I watched... Uh, but not in person, no, no? No, 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 I was up, uh, why was I up? I can't remember why I was up, but Gordon was going that day to uh, to a couple of games, actually. Uh, he went to, we went to watch Celtic uh, under one of the R20s mm -hmm. at uh, Airdrie, and then we went to the St Martin game, and I just went along because I was staying with Gordon that weekend. Mm. Just finally then, on Gordon, when did Gordon first hint to you that this could, could happen? Gordon doesn't give anything away. Doesn't, you know, you know him by now, he keeps his cards close to his chest. So if he's been, he's, he's involved in the club, I'm not involved in the club, but I'm his friend and trusted friend. So of course we've talked about the club and what's happening here, but Gordon's brief was isn't with the first team. So he was very, very, um, careful all the time that you know we've ever spoken about what's going on here um, not to say too much about that he would speak about what he's doing at the level he's working at but obviously uh, for instance the, the reason that he went to that game um, at St Mern was to give James support mm -hmm. so that James could see him in the stand you know um, backing him and being, being there for him um, but uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't give anything away. So it's only last minute that it became the, the idea that I would come here. So he's never, we've not been talking about this for months. It's not like that. It was last minute, although of course we've discussed the situation. Thanks, Mark.